Hi, my name's Holly. Uh, this is my December wrap-up for 2019. I'm a little bit behind. I had a cold sore situation, that's what the pink mark is there. The worst of it's gone, so I'm just eager to actually start filming again. I've been like itching to get going, but I did not want that recorded. <laughs> The first book that I read in December was an audiobook by Mackenzie Lee called Loki Where Mischief Lies and it was just sort of a book following like young Loki having to go to the mortal world in like Victorian uh, England I suppose and shenanigans ensue. I really enjoyed it. I had a feeling that Mackenzie Lee would handle the duality and complexity that Loki's character allows for really well and I think she achieved that. I don't think I would have tried this book if she hadn't been the author and I'm really glad that I gave it a chance. I had so much fun with the side characters and with how she dealt with Loki and just sort of the structure she built where she decided to set it like Victorian England was really cool and I believe I gave that four out of five stars. The next book that I read was The Serpent King by Jeff Sentner. This book I'd had on my TBR shelf for a long time. I just knew it was good. Uh, according to a lot of people that I trust and it was something that I, I sort of went into without fully knowing what the plot was and it ended up surprising me in really uh, devastating ways. Uh, it made me feel a lot and I definitely cried and had some uh, some points in the book where I needed to stop reading and, and take a mental health break for myself but it was such a well-written book about uh, three teenagers who are on the cusp of finishing high school and starting their lives and trying to figure out you know whether they leave their small town or whether they don't um, dealing with leaving behind the life they have and whether they're actually gonna be stuck in it forever or whether they get to move on whether they should and sort of just the difficulties that their own families pose for them so it was this really complex slice of life sort of look into a pivotal moment in pretty much any teenager's life, that point where they are officially taking the step to leave their childhood behind. And that's not a one break process, that's many little steps, but this is like where, at least for me, I remember, taking note that your life is going to change now. And that's with the end of high school. And it was a beautifully written book, it dealt so much with grief. And I think, as hard as it was, my favorite part of it was that Jeff Sentner has obviously dealt with a lot of grief in his life, or at least he, he knows it, and he gives language and words to grief that I think are really healthy to have, even if you're not going through something right now, it's something healthy to have in the back of your mind, this vocabulary to be able to work with and deal with grief, even if it's just with yourself and not talking to someone else, because when you are grieving, it is all-consuming, it is so much, and it's hard to find a voice amongst all of it. And Jeff Sentner's book, this one and the other one I read, Goodbye Days, both deal with topics of grief, and they just are so heavy and so hard-hitting and so important. Gave the Serpent King four out of five stars. The next book I read was Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Prado, and this book is a fantasy set in a world where there are people who have the magical ability to communicate and sort of control animals. Uh, they are called Animages, and there is a group amongst these Animages called the Phoenix Riders that uh, bond with and keep phoenixes that they can then ride. And right away, I definitely had vibes reminding me of, like, Aragon. And I loved this book. It was so much fun. I think the series is really promising, and it's going to be a really intriguing fantasy to follow. I loved the characters. I loved the world building. I guessed the plot twist partway through, but it was, like, in a good way, like in a, oh, I've put all these pieces together, not in a really obvious way. So I really enjoyed that. The only, uh, I don't know, issue, but thing I noted with this book is immediately I had Aragon vibes, which if you don't know is a book about dragon riders. And as the story progressed, there was a lot of similarities, and there's going to be some spoilers here, but uh, the dragon that our main character rides in Aragon is named Saphira, and the phoenix in this book is named Zephyra. They have a underground rebellious um, phoenix riding uh, group of people that are hiding in the mountains. There's the same thing but with dragons and Aragon. <laughs> There's a family backstory where, in, and spoilers alert, in Aragon 
someone that Aragon is traveling with turns out to be his father. And in this, there's also like a familial plot twist uh, where her sister turns out to be the th once thought dead uh, ex-queen. There's just a lot of similarities and I think just the name of the phoenix and the dragon alone it was like someone sort of looked at her and said maybe you should rename your dragon because or your phoenix because it's awfully similar to someone else and that said this is still fun I plan on continuing with the series it was so much fun it was so good I'm just sort of uh I don't know confused by the extreme closeness to certain plot points and character points between this and the Aragon series. I plan on rereading the Aragon series this year and I'm sort of intrigued to see whether I can pull up more similarities. I can't say that it's any sort of plagiarizing or anything. Uh, people definitely point to the Aragon series and say he plagiarized or too closely mimicked uh, and pulled from Tolkien. It is a very heavily Tolkien inspired story so like if anything by borrowing a lot of plot points from Aragon, she's just continuing the tradition of what uh, Paolini, the author of the Aragon series, did. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm not saying that is what happened, I'm just noting these similarities. December for me was a pretty good month for audiobooks. I then finished Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazemian? Nazemian? Sorry if I'm butchering her name. So this is a story following three characters. We have Judy, Reza Art. Reza is an Iranian boy who was born in Iran. His family uh, moved to Toronto where his mother remarried uh, another man and then they moved to New York City. So he's going through some cultural changes, he's moving, his family's changed, there's just so much going on and also he's gay. And he's not only gay but this book is set in the 19 like late 1980s so the AIDS crisis is full-blown and going on and he's struggling to come to terms with his sexuality amidst this crisis and so everything he knows about being gay is filtered through the AIDS crisis, so he's terrified to be gay and to get AIDS and to die. Not to mention everything else that's scary about coming out to your family, especially when you have no idea how they're going to react. And then we have Art, who is a uh, very out and proud queer gay boy in New York City. He's not quiet about it, and he is best friends with Judy, who is a straight girl in uh, New York. She's a uh, sort of plus size a little bit, super into fashion, and is just like, she's the type of person, like, if you meet them in person, you know they're struggling a bit in high school, but they are going to blossom once they get out of that hellhole, and that's exactly, like, you just feel it throughout this book, what is going to happen with her. And she ends up having a crush on the new boy in school, Reza, and so there's sort of a relationship between them, but he's actually gay, but he's in the closet, and there's all sorts of stuff between them, but all of this is set against the backdrop of the AIDS crisis. And so we have Judy's uncle Stephen, who is actually a uh, very busy uh, protester, and he is actually dying of AIDS himself. So this book is just like, for a second, it's your typical, uh, you know, um, what could be your typical YA sort of contemporary, but it's set back in the late 80s, we've got the AIDS crisis going on, and it's just so beautifully written and I loved where it took things with the characters, I loved their interaction between everybody, I loved the journey that they went on, but most of all I am blown away by the call that this book puts out for queer teens to learn their history. This is a valiant call, a war cry if you will, to get people to go out and learn about their history and sort of sparse throughout the story are little tidbits of queer history and I thought that was so cool because it, it gives you little stepping points and launching points to work from. You don't have to go into this blind. You don't just have to search AIDS crisis. There's other pieces of queer history that, modern queer history, this is the 80s, it's not far away, that I think are important for everybody to learn, but especially for queer people. And so this book was powerful. I gave it five out of five stars. I would recommend it to everybody. If you and the next book that I read was Tell Me Again, How a Crush Should Feel by Sarah Farazin. I picked this up after The Serpent King because I needed something a little bit fluffier. And while this book isn't entirely fluff, it's definitely uh, a lot lighter <laughs> than the topics I was dealing with in that book. And this is about a girl from a Persian family and she's coming to terms with and working up the courage to come out as a lesbian and she meets this new girl who is uh, well-traveled and 
sophisticated and interesting and at the same time also comes into contact with a former best friend who's dealing with a lot of heavy uh, things because her brother has passed away. So she's sort of rekindling this friendship and um, starting her first kind of relationship along with starting to come to terms with her uh, sexual identity. I think I gave this three out of five stars. It was just a fun, light, um, you know, sapphic romance with a little bit of extra uh, grit to give it a bit more traction. It's not pure fluff. It was a little bit simple. The writing was a little bit simple at times, but it got the job done. It just, it did what it promised. So the next audiobook that I ended up starting was The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. Uh, this is the second book in the Montague Siblings uh, trilogy. So the first book in the series followed Monty and his whirlwind uh, European tour in, I believe it's set in the 1700s, 18th century. And this book we actually follow his sister Felicity, who was uh, a character in the first book. And in this, she is trying to become a doctor, the first female doctor, not the first, but a female doctor in a time where women were definitely not encouraged to be doing such things. And so she has to try and find someone who is willing to teach her. She has her eyes set on a certain doctor and sets off to try and become his student. During this, she gets entangled uh, with pirates. She gets entangled with a former best friend and shenanigans ensue. There's so much that happens that you just kind of have to dive into the adventure. So it is a historical fiction book. I think these are like the most fun things ever and I am really excited for the third book. I will definitely be continuing on with the series. I found it a little bit slow to begin but I still really enjoyed where the story went. I actually ended up getting like M Marie Brennan, a natural history of dragon vibes from just the way she was dealing with her society and having to step up and um, go beyond the limits uh, imposed on women at the time, along with other spoilery things that happen. And I actually, by the end of this book, I adored it. I think I gave it four to five stars because the first half of the book was really slow and hard to get into. But by the end, everything just picked up and pieced together and I... I had so much fun listening to this audiobook. And then the final book that I ended up reading in December was another audiobook and it was, I unfortunately don't have a book to hold up, was All American Muslim Girl by Nadine Jolie Courtney. And this book I started on a whim, it was available and I just wanted an audiobook and one of my favorite books of the year. It was a five out of five stars. It follows Ali, a, a young Muslim girl living in the US and her family is not exactly religious. Her father uh, is Muslim, he's from Jordan, and he moved to America uh, to follow the American dream and married a white woman who ended up converting, but neither of them are very actually religious. It's more of a cultural thing for them. And this story follows her delving into uh, wanting to know more about her religion, wanting to be more faithful and observant, and having to discover it behind her father's back because he very much does not want her to be too Muslim in Trump's America, in the post, you know, 9-11 America, and that's where a lot of his fears stem from. And so she is having to learn about her religion on her own. This story is very much about family, it's about friendship, it's her trying to navigate this religion that she's known about but never actually dealt with herself. Also testing the limits of what it means for her as an American, as a woman, and as a Muslim, how those things sometimes seem to oppose each other, but how you can definitely be all of them at once and how to navigate and deal with all of those pressures and push and pulls. I loved it so much. It was beautiful, it was elegant, and what I liked about it was it sort of just had conversations going on about these really big topics, about whether Islam can modernize or whether it can't, and whether one can be American and Muslim, whether they diametrically oppose each other, what it means to be American, what it means to be Muslim, what it means to be a, uh, you know, a woman in America, a woman uh, who is Muslim and it was just so complex and so interesting and it didn't tie down any definitive answers It was conversations. It was points to get you thinking points um, That are such a big conversation that there's no way that they could be wrapped up in a single YA book, but I, I Don't know. I just really love that book. It definitely became one of my favorites of the year Ali was such a remarkable character 
and just the topics, the heavy, hard-hitting, very timely topics, I think were dealt with with grace. That was my December, so I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I read seven books in December, and I think that was pretty good considering the holidays were happening, I work full-time, my boyfriend came to visit for a week where I got no reading done, and there was just so many things going on that seven books, even if most of them were audiobooks, I think pretty damn good. And it was a really satisfying end to the year. There were no books that I disliked, so it was a really, uh, it was a really good, I think, uh, reading month. And yes, I continue to not know how to end a video, so goodbye.